So we're going to derive the Clapeyron equation, and before we do that, we need to look at how the chemical potential varies with temperature and pressure. And we already saw that the change in chemical potential with temperature was equal to the negative of the molar entropy, and the change in the chemical potential with pressure was equal to the molar volume. So we put those two pieces together, we get the overall change in the chemical potential is going to be the negative of the molar entropy times the temperature plus the molar volume plus the change in pressure. So notice this is just like the differential for the Gibbs function, except for we're talking about the molar entropy and the molar volume. Okay? All right. Well, we can then uh, use this to look at the Clapeyron equation and to derive the Clapeyron equation. And what is the Clapeyron equation? Well, imagine that we have a, a pressure temperature phase diagram and we've got two different phases. And we'll just label those two different phases alpha and beta because we really don't care if it's solid and liquid or solid and gas and, or liquid and gas. It doesn't matter. You just have to have two different phases. And so we're going to have a transition from one phase to the other. And so this could be vaporization, sublimation, melting, it doesn't really matter. And what we're going to do is see how this line that shows us where those two phases are in equilibrium, how that depends on the molar volume and the molar entropy. Okay? All right, so let's start by saying what is the condition for phase equilibrium? Well, if we're along this line, we know the chemical potential of Let's say, that, remember, we're just doing one, this is a one component phase diagram, so the component might be some chemical called A. So the chemical potential of A in the alpha phase has to, to equal the chemical potential of A in the beta phase, if we're along this line. And remember, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about this, this line where either one of the phases is equally stable, and so that the, the two phases would be in equilibrium if we're at a particular temperature and pressure that's somewhere on this line. Okay, so just to save time, since we're only talking about component A, we'll just abbreviate by leaving off those, those subscripts. So chemical potential in phase alpha equals chemical potential in phase beta. We can take the differential of that, the change in the chemical potential as you move along this line from one temperature and pressure to another. Is let's say you're going from, from here and you're going to move up to say here. The change in the chemical potential in alpha and beta have to equal, okay? Because the two chemical potentials are equal here, so they have to change by the same amount if they're going to be equal up here. Okay, so this is the equation we're going to use for the rest of the derivation. Oh, and we also need this, the change in the chemical potential. All right, let's go ahead and um, write that in the next page. So we have the change in chemical potential in the alpha phase is equal to the change in chemical potential in the beta phase. And then let's write out what those changes are. So we said it was negative the molar entropy in the alpha phase times dt plus the molar volume in the alpha phase dp is equal to the negative of the molar entropy in the beta phase dt plus the molar volume in the beta phase times dp. Now remember even though you have the same chemical, in this case we have something we were calling A, its molar volume in the two phases are different, just like the molar volume of solid water and liquid water are not the same. Okay, so let's put all the temperature terms on one side. So maybe we'll move this over here and we'll put all the pressure terms on this side. So we'll have the molar volume of beta minus the molar volume of alpha. dt is equal to the molar volume of beta minus the molar volume of alpha dp. And remember, just, just to refresh your memory, we're talking about some sort of that kind of phase transition between those two, that could phase equilibrium between phase A alpha and phase beta. Well, we always define deltas in this case for the rightmost phase minus the left. So what we could do is we could say, hey, beta minus alpha, we could call this delta V 
for that particular phase transition. And notice over here we've got beta minus alpha, so we could call this delta entropy for the phase transition times dt. And once we have that, we can just put the differentials together and we end up with dp, dt is equal to delta s over delta v. And that's, those are the deltas for the transition. So in other words, this is saying that as I cross that transition, how much does my entropy go up and how much does my motor volume go up? Okay, so this is the Clapeyron equation. And the Clapeyron equation will work for any phase transition as long as delta V and delta S are not zero. And a phase transition where delta S and delta V are not zero is called a first order phase transition. So for all first order phase transitions, we can use the Clapeyron equation. And what's it useful for? Well, there's two directions you can use it. If you know delta S and delta V for a particular transition, you can use it in this direction. You can calculate dp dt. You can calculate the slope, right? The slope of this line is dp dt, which means that you can actually calculate what a phase diagram should look like as long as you have delta S, delta V. Conversely, if you experimentally determine a phase diagram by direct observation and graph it and get the slope up here, then you know what this ratio is, which means that if you measure one of these two things and you already have the slope, you can calculate the third. So be prepared to use the Clapeyron equation in either one of those two directions to calculate the slope of a line on a phase diagram from these two known quantities or to ex take the slope from an experimentally determined phase diagram and calculate uh, one of these two numbers.